Hello and welcome everybody! In today's Lightroom tutorial I want to pay special attention to differentiation both in terms of color but also in terms of exposure. So I'm gonna take this raw file right here and I'm gonna turn it into a very interesting very dynamic picture just like this one while of course as always showing you every single step I do from the very start to the finished and fully edited picture. Did you ever want to build your own professional photography website? Well now you can do so with SmugMug. SmugMug allows you to build your own professional website without any coding knowledge required. With dozens of beautiful templates, unlimited storage on any plans and amazing customization as well as 24-7 customer support, you can build your own website from as low as $3 a month. Check out the link in the description to learn more and to get your 14 day free trial today. Alright, first thing, I'm gonna raise the exposure here, it was just a little bit too dark and that definitely looks a lot better. And I'm also gonna raise the shadows by 100 as well as bring down the highlights by around 50. And that way you just get a very kind of neutral picture to work with, a lot of shadow detail and a lot of highlight detail. Another very important thing are the whites, just bring them to the right until you get a really really dynamic picture and you see the difference from before to after. Very very impactful, but just be sure not to go too far, otherwise of course you're gonna clip a lot and make everything look very very terrible. So that looks pretty good for now, then the blacks you can either bring them down or up. Uh, it's really depending on your liking, by bringing them down you of course make everything a bit more harsh and add more shadows, but I'm actually gonna bring them up here so I can bring the contrast towards the right without clipping any of the shadows. And I really like this overall look from before to after, already looks a lot more bright, more dynamic. But of course we're nowhere near done yet, then the temperature slider is also a very important thing. Although it can be quite tricky, I don't want to go too warm here. So I might even go a bit more towards the blues and I think that looks pretty good for a starting base. Uh, the tint, I don't think I have to do anything there. Clarity is another very very important slider and a lot of people will just bring that one to the right no matter what. But especially in very cluttered pictures where there's a lot of stuff going on, just as this one right here with all of these stones and textures and different plants and stuff, by bringing the clarity to the right you pronounce all of these textures even more and that way of course you bring out even more clutteredness and it can really play in a negative effect in some of the cases and by going into the minus clarity you just make everything a bit more smooth, you create sort of an effect of less clutteredness which can be a really really great thing. So please try it out at least and at the end of course you can still go plus but here I really really like the look of minus clarity. And I think I'm gonna skip the vibrance and saturation just for now because I kind of like the way it looks. If I need to add or decrease some, I can always do that later. But for now, let's go down to the tonal curve. And a very important thing here is also to bring up your highlight slider. And you see it just adds a little bit more dynamic on just some of the very bright parts, especially here on these ferns. You can see it pretty well from before to after and you don't really want to bring this too much to the right or you might end up with a pretty unnatural look but just a little bit can really work in your favor and once again add a lot of complexification and a lot of differentiation. The other sliders in the tonal curve are a little bit more tricky because I don't really have a set tactic for them, just go into both plus and minus with them and at the end stick with whatever you like best. So let me just do that right here, really not a big thing but it does have a little bit of a difference. So here is before the tonal curve and here is after. A little bit of a difference but you see it's a bit more contrasty and definitely the bright parts pop a bit more. So because I don't really want to make this super long, I've done plenty of 40 minute tutorials in the past. 
but here I really just want to go relatively quick and show you for the most part what I do for differentiation. So split toning is a very very important tool in terms of differentiation because here you can really add colors to either the highlights or the shadows. So first of all I'm just gonna click on highlights here and I think I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. Really helps to give additional color of course but also to kind of warm up the entire scene. I don't want to go too far with this. Really just add a hint here and I do like this look quite a bit. And then with the shadows you can do the exact same thing just with the shadow parts and instead of going with orange here as well, which you see kind of doesn't work as well, I'm actually going into the blues here and that way we get a really nice differentiation from the shadows to the highlight parts and the more brightish parts and especially visible here in this riverbed. Now, depending on your picture, uh, you might have to grab an adjustment brush as well and grab some additional color over just some areas that you wanna differentiate. But here it happens to work pretty well, so it's not really needed to add any additional color on this riverbed. So if I show you the before any split toning and after, you see it's a lot more different colors, not only from the green to the blues but also within the green tones you see you have a ton of different hues and different shades which of course make your picture a lot more interesting a lot more complex so once again from before any split toning adjustment here to after really a very very big difference then down here detail tool I'm just gonna leave that out because of course it doesn't really have an impact on the overall look same with lens corrections effect however I think vignetting is a very important thing in quite a lot of the pictures and especially here it's definitely needed so let me bring that down here and just find out the right amount and you see it really really changes the picture completely it's so much more attention on the actual center which you know in some pictures is more necessary than in others but here it really really changes the picture completely and definitely a really really great thing. I'm gonna add quite a lot of amount here but maybe also bring the mid point a bit more towards the center and also make sure that the feather is nice and soft. So once again from before to after very very big difference and if we see here from the raw file without any editing to the picture afterwards. So now we're pretty much done with the overall global adjustments. There are of course once again way more different things that you could do but I'm just gonna leave it there because I want to make this tutorial sort of compact and I'm sure you know all of these other tools if you've watched any of my other in-depth tutorials. So let's go into the local adjustments here and first thing I'm gonna do is grab a graduated filter for the top and just reset everything for now and go into the minus exposure just to add additional vignetting, additional interest towards the center, less distraction towards the edges and I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom right here. Graduated filters are really great if you wanna do a very large adjustment over a very, well, large area of your picture, but if you want a more kind of controlled, more small adjustment, then I would suggest you to grab the adjustment brush. I also use that quite a lot of the times for additional vignetting, so let's see if there's any needed right here. Of course, always wanna make sure that your feathers to a hundred otherwise if you do an adjustment here you see it just looks like this and by bringing the feather to a hundred you have a very very soft edge and it really looks a lot more natural but regardless you of course don't want to go that far into the minus exposure I'm just gonna paint a little bit over the edges right here and it's very important that you are not afraid of adding vignetting because once again it can be so valuable and really make your picture truly unique and truly special so here's before the little bit of adjustment brush vignetting and here's after I really don't think there's too much needed here because I've already added so much vignetting 
both with the vignetting tool as well as with the graduated filters. Now I really do like the overall look of the picture, there's a lot of vignetting, a lot of light to dark, but I still think it's a little bit muffled and maybe a bit too flat still. So what I'm gonna do is add some rail filters to add some dodge and burning and uh, dodge and burning of course is make an individual part of your picture darker or brighter and you could use the adjustment brush for that as well but I really like the rail filter for that because you have full control, you have an even softer edge and you of course can just drag them around to your likings. First off I'm actually gonna start with the plus exposure right here and I've made a way more in-depth tutorial about Dutch and Burning. If you would like to see that video then be sure to check the link in the description below. But for now, yeah, just gonna increase some of the exposure here and maybe even add a bit of yellow just to once again increase the color scheme even more and then just make it seem as if some of these ferns were hit by light. I might have been a little bit too much right here, then right click duplicate and you really, really can go crazy with it. You can really change the way your scene looks completely and as long as you don't do it too much or as long as you don't add plus exposure in shadow areas, it will end up looking natural. So I'm not gonna do a very careful job here because I don't wanna bore you with 10 minutes of dodge and burning. So I'm gonna do it very quickly here. Just right click duplicate, add it over another area that I think could use some more plus exposure. And you can also go back here, for example. I think that works pretty well. So that already looks a lot better from before to after. It's kind of a very, you know, drastic difference if you see the direct before to after. But once you get used to it, once you look at the picture for a minute or two, it really starts to look natural. And of course, the additional interest and the additional complexification is very, very big. But I'm not done yet, so let's grab some other plus exposure rail filters for now and just adjust the size and right click duplicate, maybe one more over here. And I think that looks pretty good. You can also stack a, a smaller one on top of a bigger one, of course. And uh, the great thing with the rail filters as well, you can just go to each and every single rail filter separately and adjust the value of the settings there while not having any impact on any of the other rail filters. So I'm gonna finish up here, maybe just another one back there. And I think that should do the job in terms of the plus exposure filters. So once again, so far here is before any and here is after. But now I'm also gonna add some negative exposure filters to complexify everything even more to create more of a contrast and differentiation from light to dark. And of course, just go over the already dark areas and kind of go in between some of the uh, plus exposure filters and just try to complexify everything even more. Right click duplicate, one more over here, maybe in between right there. So this is a little bit darker, make this whole cliff a bit darker because it's obviously in the shadows. And make this stone a bit more contrasty, right click duplicate. Once again, I'm doing this very fast. I'm not paying too much attention on every single filter. You could really go crazy with it and create a very small one, zoom in one to one and all of that stuff but I'm gonna keep it rather simple here. So let's just finish that up as well, just in between there. Add a bit more negative exposure right here. And I think that should do the job pretty well. So here is before any dodge and burning, and here is after. So you see, it's a very, very big difference here but I might just add a few more smaller one plus exposure filters over some of these rocks, right click duplicate, really gonna do this very quickly, right click duplicate again and just add some more interest, some more exposure on just some very small parts. And yeah, I think that should do the job. Of course, if that's still a little bit too much for you, you can always go to the rail filters and kind of dial back some of the settings. 
but I think it does the job pretty well and I do like the overall look here. So the only thing that I can think of doing is to just grab another graduated filter for the back here and just add a bit of warmth because I think the back was a bit colder than the foreground. So then let me think if there is anything that I want to do to the picture before I say that I'm done and huh, if I look at it the foreground is a bit flat so let me go back to the real filters and just add a pretty big one over the foreground right here really go quite far into the plus exposure and also add some warmth here and yeah that does look quite a bit better but other than that I really think I'm almost done maybe just grab another adjustment brush with minus exposure and add some additional vignetting on some corners right here and yeah that should do the job so I'm just gonna say that I'm done here with this picture so then let's go into the history and see where we started that with the raw file and you see I mean huge difference a lot more flat a lot more dark and here afterwards after all of the editing a lot more differentiation a lot more interest and once again if you don't really like this very heavy edited look you can always not move the sliders quite as far as i have done and at the end still end up with a much more interesting and a lot more complex and dynamic picture Get your photography out there and share your pictures in a professional manner with your own website. With dozens of beautiful templates, unlimited storage on any plans and amazing 24-7 customer support, SmugMug is the ideal tool to use to build your own website if you want to showcase your work in a professional and stylish way. Click the link in the description to learn more and to get your 14-day free trial so you can try out everything for yourself. So that was pretty much it, thank you all very much for watching, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already of course, and anyways that was it for today, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.